everyone, it's Bobby from Decoding and this is the 25th video in the building and launching the Real Django website series. So in this video, we're gonna be talking about SEO or we're gonna be talking about on-site SEO. We're gonna be adding it to some of the templates that we've been developing throughout this playlist. So if you've been following along, which I hope you have been, you'll know by now that the website that we've built is looking good, right? So we're, we've got it on a development server currently. There is something on production, but it's just a coming soon page. It's currently April, 2021. So if you're looking at this in the future, you'll see that the website's looking good, right? So, uh, the, but what we now need to start thinking about is when we go live, when we go into production and it's live and the world can see all of the pages, we want uh, to make sure that it's as optimized as it can be for SEO. So if you don't know what SEO is, it stands for Search Engine Optimization. So a popular search engine, Google, right? So uh, what you're trying to do is you're trying to optimize your website to allow Google or other search engines to understand the makeup of your website so you can ultimately appear higher in searches. So when your customers are tapping away on the keyboard, trying to find a service in their area or wherever, um, you wanna be appearing in that search and you wanna be appearing higher than your competitors. And the way you do that is by making sure that the cornerstones of your templates in terms of SEO are covered, right? So we wanna make sure that we have one H1 element in each template tag. We wanna make sure that we've got a title and it's optimized. We wanna make sure that we've got a description, keywords, canonical. We wanna make sure that we've got uh, structured data uh, and then we want to make sure that the images that we're using on the on each page have got the right alt tags and things like that. So as a developer, this is what I do. Um, there's then content to be added to each of the pages, sort of what essentially is the wording. Well, that normally comes, in my case, that normally comes from my marketing guys, right? So um, we won't be looking at the content. Uh, we certainly won't be doing a deep dive in this tutorial, this playlist but the content is very, very important. So get a grasp of that for your own projects, speak to your marketing teams, do your research, and just make sure that your content is punchy, to the point, um, and is as optimized for SEO as you possibly can be. Also, you've then got offsite SEO. So we won't be covering that in this tutorial at all, but offsite SEO would cover things like backlinks. Um, so do your research. There is a link in the description from, a, it's a very handy page that I've used as a resource over the last couple of weeks. And it goes through a real sort of um, top to bottom, um, you know, under the hood of SEO for a beginner, which is which is outstanding. So have a look at that website. It really does give you a deep dive of everything to do about SEO. So look at my screen. Uh, you can see I've got it open currently on the base.html in the project. I've already added the tags to the template and we're just gonna walk through them. This will be a very, very short video, not like a 30 minute uh, video, which was the last one. By the way, the link to which is just up there. Um, so have a look at the last one if you haven't already. But this one, we're just gonna go through the tags that I've added and we'll just wrap it up after them. This is the base HTML. So this is what is the foundation of each of the templates. So if you visit the home, the about, the contact and the media URL, it's still feeding from this base HTML. So the head is the same on all the templates. So we only need to add a title to the base HTML. We only need to add a description meta tag and so on and so forth to the base HTML. That is of course, unless you need something specific for a unique page that you may be some structured data for a blog, for instance, we won't necessarily have that in the, um, the head of the base HTML. So what I've got here is did demo, which is the uh, company name, I'm just adding it. I've got a bar and then I've got home. So I've got if request path. So if the path is just a slash, I, I, it's the index page, the home page of the website, I'm saying that I want the title to be this. So I'm putting did demo home coding made easy. So um, as a strap line, more or less. And I'm putting else. So if it's anything other than the homepage, so it'd be slash contact slash media or another, it depends how this pro uh, project uh, develops. I'm then using a with template tag. And I'm saying with name, so I'm creating a variable name equals request.path. So I'm getting the same, um, accessing the request um, from the context dot path and then I'm using a filter slice. So I'm slicing the first character 
away from forward slash contact or forward slash media. So what I'm left with is just media. And then what I'm doing with the name variable is I'm using a filter called title. So I'm capitalizing that word. So it's then capital C contact, yeah? So it now, rather than if, on home it says home, and the reason I'm doing it that way is because there is no words to do any formatting on for home. So I say, if it's home, then we say this. If it's not, then this is what we do. And that's what we're doing for the title. I have changed this, so the meta tag name author, so I've added did coding, but you would put whatever you want in there. Description, so this is quite important actually. You need to be, um, I think you've got 160 something, I can't remember what it is, but you just make sure that the description that you use on your website is within the, um, the limits of what is deemed normal for a description meta tag. So I'm very, very low in terms of text here. This is just a demo website, I'm not too worried, but I'll just put, just, just describe your business as well as you can in as few words as possible, but use up um, all real estate as you can in the meta tag. So if you're allowed 160 characters, use 160 characters if you can. So I've just used did coding, and let's use a capital there. So did coding makes easy to understand coding tutorials on YouTube, nothing fancy. And then we've got keywords. So I've separated the keywords out with a comma here, and I've just got, so these can be keywords or keyword phrases. This is massively important. Do your research. Work out what your competitors are doing. Work out what keywords are being searched for, and you can do this on Google, right? So really do some analysis and do a deep dive on what your keywords should be for your own project. It, I can't emphasize that enough, okay? Um, in this, I'm just, I've got four, so I've got coding made easy, coding tutorials, Django tutorials, and Python tutorials. I'm not, I haven't put any thought in there at all, I haven't done a research, like I say, this is just a demo. So they're my keywords. Then I've got um, canonical, uh, we're just using request.path. So this never comes out of the box in these templates, so you, you'll always have to add that. I haven't seen the template where it comes out of the box. Then we've got home, so a link relation home. And what we add there is just the template tag URL and we, we pull off the home, so it's main home. And then we've got three icons, so short icons. So the first one is the one that came out of the box, actually, and I've only just changed that. So what you need is just a small icon. It doesn't have to be your logo. In fact, some logos are quite complicated. You need it to be quite large to make sense of it. So you, you what I've used is I'll show you, if I open static, go into branding, and I've got here an icon.jpg, so a JPEG, and I'm just using this. So, I've, you know, it hasn't got to be anything fancy, but this will appear in a browser in the top left of the browsing um, page. You've seen them on all of the websites, so whenever you go onto a website, it'll always have an icon, but that's what we're doing here in the base HTML. So we've got shortcut icon, and there's a type image JPEG, and then we reference the static, directory, branding icon. We do another one, relationship icon. I don't know why I've got two in there. I think I had a problem with it appearing, so I used this, I just changed the code, and then it worked, so I didn't remove the last one. You don't need to have two, I've got shortcut, shortcut icon there, and then I've got icon. And the next one, I've got an Apple Touch icon. So I've just found that some of these templates that I'm using, they, they use different variations of those um, icons, and every time I come across a new one, I add it onto it. So. Um, I've done that and then I've got an include. So I've added another partial. If I open up the partials, I've now got structured data. So there is a link in the description to, um, in fact, let me show you. Open this. Open this up and it's the structured data markup helper. And there is another website as well. Let me open that up as well. There we go. Well, there's different websites that you can use where you can actually create structured data or schema markup generators. It creates JSON that sits inside a script that goes onto your website. And what that does, it helps the likes of Google really understand more about the website. It doesn't have to um, you know, stick the finger in the air and guess from certain parts of content, uh, content, H1 tags, and so on and so forth. By having the schema markup in your website, the structured data in your website, it's cut and dry, it's black and white. 
Google, Bing, other search engines will go straight to your website and they'll understand exactly what was going on. Yeah, so this is context, it's got the types of corporation, it's got the name, it's got the company name, the alt name, it's got the URL of the website, it's got where the logo is. I've got this as the static um, CDN. So I've got a subdomain static CDN, so the, the statics are being served to this website using an S3 bucket. If you look at the, there's a link to the video up here. We set one up on DigitalOcean. So I've added the URL from that CDN of the logo. So if the did logo um, color, and then same as. So it allows you to then put some of your socials in there. So this website is essentially the website for twitter.com slash decoding, and then it's got YouTube with my channel ID. So that's what we're doing there. We've got the structured data as an include, rather than having a schema up here. And then all we've got is the style too. So, okay, I've got another CSS file that I'm pulling from there. So I actually changed some. What I did in a previous video, if you remember, I really glossed over this quickly. I said, yeah, I'll change the font uh, and, and kind of moved on from there. And I did, I changed the font, but I did that by going into the CSS file. Uh, if I open it up, assets, CSS, this isn't to do with um, SEO. I just forgot that I did this in the last video. Uh, if we go into style, there's now a style too. Style, if you see this first one here, it's got all the fonts. It's got another font at the end. Uh, did I add it there or did I add it at the start? I can't remember now. No, it, there we go, we just got Courier Prime. So I added Courier Prime to the font in the CSS file and then what I did, I did a control H and changed all of the fonts to Courier Prime. Saved it, saved it as a new file so I didn't lose the old one and then loaded up the new CSS file into the project. Bob's your uncle, we've got a new font. So um, that's all to do with, that's, really, that's more or less finishing touches because if your company that you work for or you're creating has got a brand um, and a color palette, then you wanna use those, use that in your project as much as you can, right? So we use Courier Prime in de uh, decoding and we also have a color palette. So what I haven't done so far, is I haven't changed the colors in the project. So I'll do that when we do a finishing up kind of a tutorial and one or two uh, videos down the line. Um, there are, and in that video, what we'll do, we'll just make sure that the type, there's no typos, we'll make sure that the uh, website is rendering really well on different um, screen sizes, we'll make sure that the footer hasn't got any duff information in it. I know there's a bit of information that I haven't changed yet, so we'll do that in that video. So before I wrap this video up, there's one other thing, and this is quite important. Each HTML template must have, or should have, just one H1 element. Just one H1 tag, not two, not three. Some templates that you get that you download or when you create, you sometimes have multiple. Google doesn't like it, search engines don't like that. Confuses matters. And what you want in your H1 tag is a keyword or one of your keywords or key, keyword phrases. So if I show you where I've put that, I've put it in the footer. So I'll find H1. Okay, so I've got, it doesn't really matter where the H1 is I've found. Um, I've got two or three websites that have been that have had outstanding SEO. We've done really, really well. So what I've just done historically is taken the ones that do work, repeat, and repeat. So I and, and what I found is um, the H one tag. It doesn't really matter where you put it. Just make sure you have got one. And I found that I, I tend to put it in the footer these days. So I just make sure the CSS is right. So it, it look it doesn't have to look like H one because normally a H one tag is in the header. Sorry, in a in a a, a, a slider on the top of your, your page and it's normally big font. So in this case it's H1 and it's just saying coding tutorials, it can say whatever keyword phrase you have. There are going to be images also on this website or on my website that might need a bit of work because it is good practice to have an alt tag on the images and to call the images something relevant or akin to your keyword phrases. So for instance, this is coding tutorials. I could have an image and it could say, man um, watching coding tutorial, for instance. I can give you, a, I can give you a, an example. I haven't actually done any of the images yet. I might do them outside of this video. So yeah, we've got a slider here. We've got an image tag. So this is the image we've got. An, oh, so it says image has tech in this one currently. And I can say, man watching coding tutorial and I can do the same again here so it just adds some adds another layer of context when Google 
is trying to figure out what on earth that you do as a company. And that's what we're trying to do, just spoon feeding search engines. Because the name of the game here is to make sure that your users and your customers, when using a search engine, are typing in your keyword phrases and you are appearing top of the search, if not top, in the top three. If you do appear top, then you get things such as, or you can get things such as site links, which is a you know, fantastic place to be. If you have site links, it means you're doing a very good job, by the way. So anyway, look, I'm gonna bookend the end of this video now. It's been going on far too long. <laughs> We've been talking about SEO. Technically speaking, it is a, a very broad subject, but I just wanted to make sure that we covered the fundamentals in this project for what we're working on now, which is H1, canonical, we've got a description, we've got keywords, we've got a title, we've got the author. That's it, I think, I think we've covered all of them. Um, we haven't done the content, which is hugely important, but we're not doing content because I don't know what your business is and it's, you know, there's an art to writing good content. So really do your research. That's it for today. If this is the first time to the channel, then please subscribe. Uh, and uh, like the video. And also, if you want to support the channel, then there's a link to our Patreon page in the description below. Any pledges are massively welcomed. So, thank you very much for watching. I hope it was uh, of interest to you, and I'll be seeing you in the next video. Thank you, bye.